everything is connected. That is the basic message that Pope Francis conveys in his letter to the world titled Laudato Si, known in English as Praise Be to You. It cannot be emphasized enough how everything is interconnected. Time and space are not independent of one another. And not even atoms or subatomic particles can be considered in isolation. Just as the different aspects of the planet, physical, chemical, and biological, are interrelated, so too living species are part of a network which we will never fully explore and understand. Integral ecology is the principle that humans should recognize the interconnectedness among themselves, the earth they inhabit, and the economic systems they create. In Laudato Si, Pope Francis makes the case for integral ecology, emphasizing that everything we do has an impact on the environment and other human beings. Environmental education should facilitate making the leap towards the transcendent, which gives ecological ethics its deepest meaning. It needs educators capable of developing an ethics of ecology and able to help people to grow in solidarity, responsibility, and compassionate care. We need to become intensely aware of the impact that climate change and environmental degradation will have on society's most vulnerable populations. Put simply, it is a matter of redefining our notion of progress. A technological and economic development which does not leave in its wake a better world and an integrally higher quality of life cannot be considered progress. A prayer for our earth. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain, at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey toward your infinite light. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, and peace. at the Jesuit Conference of Canada and the U.S. I'm here at Georgetown University at a conference on integral ecology. The Synod on the Amazon will take place in October of 2019, and Pope Francis has asked us to come together and look at how are we affecting biomes that are essential for human life, like the Amazon and the Congo Basin and other parts of the world. And what is the role we can play in protecting those areas that are essential for human life? When Pope Francis talks about integral ecology, I get the sense that he means this is not simply about uh, the environment, but it's about the way human beings live in the environment. It's about the ways communities form and care for one another. Está reunido con todos mis hermanos de la cuenca amazónica con mi hermano de Mesoamérica con mi hermano de África de Asia pero también reunido con los apus de la iglesia We're finding that a lot of our students that we're teaching about environment issues really want to be a part of the solution that really means enormous change. I feel as though this is a really terrific opportunity to raise awareness, to think about how do we bring Laudato Si to action. You know, I think our care for our common home has to start at home, has to start in the ways we live our daily lives, uh, what we consume, uh, how we 
choose to make use of energy uh, resources, um, where we choose to spend our money, and maybe in a really important way, who we think of as our neighbors. Who are the people we think about when we're making our choices about what to eat or where to travel or who to be? You know, we often say that human life, uh, as given by God, is about human flourishing. And that only happens when our planet flourishes as well. We recognize that there is a benevolent God who created everything out of love and wisdom. And so our caring for creation is also an act of accountability to the giver. Pope Francis gave us a call to action with Laudato Si, which really directly gets you right between the eyes in terms of our responsibility to this worldwide crisis. The Jesuits have just recently reinforced this with their four apostolic preferences, one of which is care for creation, another one is accompanying the youth in this world and bringing them into a hope-filled future. And that's where I really feel like Jesuit universities and the students that are with them, we're all called to help advance these very ambitious and very important goals for our, our collective future. It isn't something that we can fix with technology. It really has to be a change of heart. From Congo to Colombia, indigenous peoples are seizing the initiative and challenging legal systems that have ignored their ancestral claims. As these Equator Prize winners show, it can take years of activism to secure environmental justice. A number have forfeited their lives. July 2014, Kinshasa, capital of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Thousands of pygmies, members of 43 indigenous organizations, the dynamic group of indigenous peoples, are making history as they march for the first time. It's the culmination of years of work demanding legal recognition. On devrait se battre pour la reconnaissance juridique des peuples autochtones pygmées, c'est-à-dire comment arriver à définir ces statuts dans notre pays. Parce que au départ, ce n'était pas facile de reconnaître le pygmée comme autochtone selon les instruments juridiques internationaux. Au-delà de cet aspect, on devrait aussi se battre pour que les territoires de ces peuples, leurs terres euh, ancestrales, soient protégées euh, au même titre que les autres communautés. Et comment est-ce qu'on arrive à garantir euh, le mode de vie de ces communautés autochtones dans les espaces forestiers? The Pygmy march to secure adoption of a law to protect their rights as limited access to the forest where they had lived for centuries threatened their very survival. Il vit là-bas. C'est la, la, le marché, notre marché, c'est la forêt. Tout, tout ça devient là-bas. Mais comme je, viens, je disais, tout est disparu, tout est parti, tout est concédé, tout est ravi. C'est vraiment grave aujourd'hui pour les communautés autochtones. The Pygmies campaign has halted concessions covering 600,000 square kilometers of rainforest. It has also stopped the chance of further incursions by extractive industries. <laughs> Tapajos, Brazil. Along its tributaries, the Munduruku people have formed a resistance movement against a planned hydroelectric project that threatens to flood their lands and submerge one million hectares of primary rainforest. Maior destruição. Aí vai acabar com, com tudo. Vai acabar com as, as essas ilhas aqui. Essa ilha aqui que a gente vê, e vai para o fundo. Vai virar maior lago. Não vai existir mais. The Munduruku resistance movement is called Ipreaya. I am strong, I know how to protect myself. They are fighting for their lands and their right to be consulted on development projects. Ipreaya has successfully demarcated their territory in order to persuade the government to permanently protect their land. They have also put in place a protocol on free, prior, and informed consent. Protests continue to be organized against a government consultation process, which they believe is stacked against them. É a gente luta aqui, né? Como sempre eu falo que nós mundo como mulheres, tantos homens, todos nós somos contra barragem, né? Que a gente 
para dizer que é, se manifesta para dizer que a gente é contra e nunca abriremos a nossa mão. Muratia, a Dayak community in Indonesian Kalimantan. The Dayak depend on the forest for survival, yet by 1993 they had lost more than half their 11,000 hectare territory to industrial mining and logging. Masalahnya kita telah dihadiri oleh beberapa perusahaan yang berinvestasi di wilayah Muratia sehingga menimbulkan kerusakan lingkungan di wilayah adat merupakan kerusakan air sungai, hutan, wilayah jadi sempit, binatang buruan jadi hilang, dan segala kebutuhan masyarakat adat sehari-hari sangat berkurang dari sebelumnya. 20 years ago, determined to halt the destruction, the Murataya Community Group was founded. Its mission, to protect the remaining forests and the community's cultural identity. So far, activists from the community have stopped incursions onto their land saving their remaining 4,000 hectares and replanting over 700 hectares of forest that had been lost. Kalau menurut saya, berjuang itu sangat penting. Kalau tidak ada seorang pejuang, nah siapa lagi yang masa depan anak kita? Sementara generasi penerus kita butuh hutan dan tanah. Aponte, Colombia, home to 3,600 Inga. Beautiful and remote, Inga lands were an obvious target for drug traffickers. Iniciando en los años 1986, se empieza a hacer de todos estos territorios su cuna de lo que ha sido el conflicto armado. Y finalmente pues se termina con todo lo que son los cultivos de uso ilícito in our territory, being a great part of the presence of the cultivars of Amapola. Defeating the drug cartels demanded a campaign which would break their economic hold. Yes, además, the people here no had no other way to capture resources. Amapola was leaving us monthly between 6,000 and 8,000 million pesos. Organization, based on a shared vision of justice, was vital, as was a communal fund to provide financial security. Ultimately, their success, which saw them recover rights to 22,283 hectares, depended on reviving their cultural and traditional values. Primero, eh, para nosotros poder salir de ese flagelo, decidimos adentrarnos en nuestros principios de vida. No robar, no mentir, no ser perezosos, ser dignos para alcanzar un bien vivir. Y ese bien vivir en un relacionamiento armonioso con nuestra madre tierra. Having secured their rights to their land, the Inga have now set aside 17,500 hectares as a sacred area. They have demonstrated how even a small community can take on a global giant. Creo que fue uno de los milagros más grande superar esa debilidad que nosotros teníamos como pueblo y le ha hecho un aporte significativo para la humanidad. The Gulf of Fonseca, southern Honduras one of the poorest regions in Latin America. Uncontrolled shrimp farming has caused extreme environmental degradation, but it's not just the ecosystem that's at risk. Members of Codefa Gulf, the Committee for the Defense and Development of the Gulf of Fonseca, have faced death threats, and recently, three artisanal fishing activists were murdered. Members of Codefa Gulf are not daunted. Yo creo que hay una, un llamado a la acción, o sea, que nos pongamos de acuerdo. El gobierno como normador, eh, nosotros como sociedad civil que actúa sobre los problemas y la comunidad. Y eh, comencemos a, a pensar más en el irreversible cambio climático sin resignarnos a que va a ser así. Community action has seen over 1,200 hectares of mangrove restored, while artificial reefs have increased fish stocks by 36% benefiting over 7,000 families. Es una zona de, de manglares, una zona natural de manglares, principalmente el mangle rojo, el rizófora mangle, eh, en donde cantidad de aves están permanentes esperando su comida. Eh, la actividad de los pescadores acá consiste en estar pendiente de cualquier actividad ilegal para reportarla a Codefa Golf, 
y a las autoridades competentes porque ellos son los guardianes permanentes de estas zonas. To date, Cadefa Golf has established nine protected areas and secured 70,000 hectares as a Ramsar site. For Liana, what's important is that the lessons are transferred. No se vale rendirse, podemos luchar juntos por un futuro mejor. Este, algo que ha logrado el cambio climático es que nos ha globalizado, nos ha globalizado sus consecuencias, pero también es necesario que nosotros globalicemos las innovaciones, globalicemos las manos luchando y eh, no importa si eh, estamos en un país como Honduras, tercer mundista quizás, o estamos en Europa, es necesario nuestra acción inmediata por eh, que el planeta tenga un mañana.